All right, so in the previous lesson, we learned the website basics. So we learned what exactly you need to start any new website. And we actually looked at why we're using WordPress and what it's going to be used for. And we also looked at how to actually start a hosting account. And we did that with HostGator. So if you haven't done so already, uh, be sure to go back to the first lesson. But in this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to install WordPress. Before we actually do that, we're going to be talking about the cPanel because the cPanel will allow us to install WordPress much easier and also has a lot of functionality that we can use. So in order to access the cPanel, we're going to go back to our email. Our original email when we signed up for HostGator, we should have gotten an email in about 5 to 10 minutes um, and it should have given us a couple of things, our cPanel URL, our username, our password, and our name servers. And for now, the first thing that we need are the first three, which was our cPanel, our username, and our password. So you're just going to find the cPanel URL. It should be something like gator and then a number dot hostgator.com. Um, and you're going to find your username and your password. You're just going to enter that in and you're just going to log in. So now we're in something called your cPanel. It's also known as your control panel. Um, and the control panel really houses a lot of functionality. In addition to allowing you to install WordPress very simply, uh, it also houses a lot of functionality that we'll need in the future when we have to manage our website. Okay? And I'll talk about a couple of those things very briefly right now. We'll see that probably in the future later. Uh, the first being your special offers. And the special offers, really what they are is they provide you coupons. Coupons for stuff like Google AdWords, Yahoo Ads, uh, yellow pages, stuff like that. So if you've ever wanted to you know, grow your business or if you want to grow traffic or gain traffic to your website, those are some things that are very useful and they, they provide you, like in our case, we have a $100 Google AdWords uh, coupon. So that allows us to have $100 worth of Google AdWords credit. Uh, so just good because they're coupons. You've already paid for the hosting account. So that's a good place to look um, if you do need coupons in the future for anything uh, website related. The next being uh, your live chat support. That's something that you definitely need to, to know and to use because um, if you ever have any technical difficulties, mainly with the hosting itself, if you ever, ever have any questions about your billing or your sales or any technical support, you can definitely just click on that button and it'll pop open a, a live chat and they're very responsive with that. The next thing we'll be talking about is our email. The email is if you ever want to set up an email, for example, in our case, like a contact at wpforalltv.com, say we wanted to set that up, we would just do that in the email account right there and it makes your life a lot easier. The next one, which is probably the most important, is our file manager and the file manager is a FTP client. It's like an FTP client um, where what an FTP client is, it allows you to upload and also download files or documents to or from your website. And so that's very useful. So you need to upload a PDF, say you want to install um, some sort of theme manually, or if you have any error or any bug in a code that you added and you want to delete that, you can do that in the file manager right there. The next thing we're going to be looking at is the domains. So the domains really, it's only useful um, in the future when you have multiple websites. In our case, we only have one website, so it's probably not going to be useful right now. But in the future, when we have multiple websites. That's really when we'll use that functionality and it's very important. But we'll save that for the future. And the final thing is going to be the quick install. And that's what we're actually going to use in this lesson. Um, so we're just going to click on that. And to talk very briefly about what exactly QuickStall is, it's a one-click install for any type of uh, web design platform or software. And we'll see that there's stuff like WordPress, there's Drupal, there's Joomla. So there's quite a few different web design platforms that we can use. In our case, we're going to be using WordPress. So we're just going to click on that. And then we're going to press Continue. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to see a drop-down menu. And for our case, and probably for your case as well, is that you're going to see one domain name. And that's simply because we've only registered one domain name uh, with our hosting account. And so we're going to see that right there is wfeeforalltv.com, the one that we registered in the past. And so now you're just going to enter in all your information right here. So after you've actually entered in all your information, all you're going to do is click Install Now. And after about 20 seconds or so, you're going to see that's complete with the 100% and the congratulations. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to hold on to a couple of pieces of information. And we're going to see the admin area, which is our URL, which was um, wpforalltv.com slash wp-admin, our username, and our password. And these three things are going to allow us to access something called our WordPress dashboard or our backend of WordPress. And that's going to be what we're going to use to edit our WordPress website. But for now, what I wanted to do, I want to check to make sure WordPress did in fact install. And this is good practice after any step that you do or any change that you make into your website is to always check before and after what happened. 
And so before this, I just searched in the URL of the website, wpforalltv.com, um, in the address bar above and we would see something like this. And it'll be very similar if you looked at your website before, showing that HostGator was in fact installed, but nothing was on your website. But after we installed WordPress, when we refresh the website, we're gonna see something more like this, right? And this should indicate that yes, in fact, WordPress has installed. And we're gonna see Hello World, which is indicative of any programming language or indicative of WordPress as well. And we're gonna see that default theme was in fact installed onto our website. But it is good practice to, after every step that you make, to actually check to make sure because if you ever run into a problem in the future, right, and you made a lot of changes, you won't actually know which change caused that problem if you don't check after each step. So it's always good to have that practice in the start. And so in the next lesson, we're actually going to be looking at how to access our backend of WordPress and how to actually work with our dashboard.